Did you know ACDC's Jailbreak wasn't released in America for over eight years? Why? Because their record label felt the song was too horrific for teenage consumption. We'll tell you the whole crazy story and other lesser known facts about ACDC in this episode of You Think You Know Classic Rock? But first, did you know the man who designed ACDC's iconic logo also worked the same magic for Ted Nugent, Boston, Foreigner, Time Magazine, and Pepsi? His name is Gerard Huerta, and his now famous design first appeared on the band's Let There Be Rock album way back in 1977. So ACDC must have paid him tons of money, right? Wrong. <laughs> Other than his original and quote, fair, commission, he's never made an additional dime off his creation despite it being used again and again on countless records, t-shirts, and other assorted merchandise. Did you know that Leonard Skinner singer Ronnie Van Zant was supposedly jealous of ACDC's early success? The story goes that he stormed the offices of a radio station in his band's hometown of Jacksonville, Florida, after a DJ reported on air that local fans were requesting and buying ACDC more than Leonard Skinner. After inspecting the station's data, Van Zant left even more confused than before, saying, ACDC, huh? Remember the record label guy from the Blues Brothers? You right guys now. were hot. You were great and saying, I've got to record you. Well, in real life, he was Michael Kleffner an Atlantic Records executive who was one of ACDC's most important early supporters. He was like an attack dog. He wouldn't let go, says a co-worker. But after helping the band climb nearly to the top of the rock heap, he decided to back the wrong horse. Well, producer. Supposedly, Kleffner threw a fit when the band decided to fire the legendary producer Eddie Kramer before they even started work on their 1979 breakthrough, Highway to Hell. His angry reaction cost him his job. Yeah! And the soon-to-be even more legendary Mutt Lang took over and helped the band create the masterpiece they needed to achieve world domination. You know who else was almost supposedly fired? Singer Bon Scott, way back in 1975. Author Jesse Fink attempts to get to the bottom of this oft-rumored story in his fantastic book, The Youngs, The Brothers Who Built ACDC. In it, former ACDC bassist Mark Evans states that a heroin overdose prompted Angus and Malcolm Young to consider sacking Scott in favor of former Easy Beats frontman and solo star Stevie Wright. I think they viewed Bond to be ultimately disposable, he says. In hindsight, it seems preposterous, but at the time, he was always in the firing line. One thing we may never know is just how much, if at all, Bond Scott contributed to the songwriting process for Back in Black, the 1980 album ACDC released shortly after the singer's tragic death. The official line is that the band wrote all the songs with his replacement, Brian Johnson. But it's also been reported that Scott was working on new songs right up until the day he died and was scheduled to start work on the record shortly thereafter. His girlfriend has also been quoted as saying that a notebook containing unreleased Scott lyrics disappeared from his home shortly after his death and that he had mentioned the song title Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution to her previously. In another unconfirmed report, Choir Boy singer and Albert Productions recording artist Mark Gable claims Scott's estate is getting one-third of the publishing royalties for the entire Back in Black album. Finally, ACDC's former booking agent, one-time Motley Crue manager Doug Thaler, declares, I don't care who tells me anything different. You can bet your life that Bon Scott wrote the lyrics to You Shook Me All Night Long. Okay, back to the story of Jailbreak. This propulsive escape anthem first appeared on the Australian edition of the band's third album, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. But the album wasn't released in America until 1981, after the smash hit success of Highway to Hell and Back in Black. And even then, Jailbreak wasn't included, apparently due to that horrific lyrical content. But Wiser Heads finally prevailed, and in 1984 the song was set free on the 1974 Jailbreak EP. That's it for today. Stay tuned for more episodes of You Think You Know Classic Rock? Meanwhile. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check out more of the best in classic rock coverage on ultimateclassicrock.com.